Traveling throughout dawn, the Iron Crab and her companions performed at a number of tournaments. Exhibition matches of a sort, more of a chance to earn coin. Eventually, however, the Lords tired of their show, and so the band of the Iron Crab continued to the west, to Old Town. Kidnappers had whisked away an influential merchant's daughter. Returning her was no small task, but the battle was won by the band. Having performed their outstanding duties, Raywin thirsted for more of a challenge. And so, with the tawny of the Nine Stars nearing, the band set their attention towards the Vale. There, the metal of Rewin and her band would be tested against that of the Lords. Would the crab reign supreme, or would her shell crack? Only time would tell. Right, I know many of you haven't been to the Vale before. I haven't myself. But as Aelin has explained to many of you, the area can be dangerous. So please do keep your wits about you. Especially once we enter Nine Stars. While our renown is starting to grow, we still have many enemies. We are sellswords at the end of the day, even though some of you may be sirs, and others would very much like to see themselves in the position we are right now. The Lannister's gold is not always easy to acquire, and we have such a ready stream of it. Let's just say I wouldn't be surprised to find some knives at our necks. Are you so sure that this is the right course of action? Let us not fly too close to the sun, my lady. I have no plans at all to fly, Bryden, and I know that many of you prefer to keep your feet firmly on the ground. So grab the last of your drinks, saddle up, for we are to ride out to the bloody gate. Aelin, you shall be our guide. As you wish, my lady. I will show you the way. Kia ora, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rykon here. Welcome back to Raywin's Tale. We are just outside of Goldtown. We are going to be riding all the way into the Vale, attempting to make it to Nine Stars. There are a number of locations that we're going to want to visit along the way, the Bloody Gates being one of them. It'd be nice to actually ride through there. So we're going to do that. The crab's nest also sounds great, but uh, we're going to be trying as much as we can to um, to stick to just visiting a few of the towns that are around here along the way to increase our renown, but our goal of course is nine stars, so we're going to be riding up and around. We might even have a little bit of trouble going that way. You know what? We might actually have to go around this way rather than going through the bloody gate, which is usually how you would enter the Vale, but we did come to Goldtown via boat, so that kind of makes a little sense. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to make it over there, so we're going to visit all of these small villages around here and slowly work our way around towards Nine Stars. Uh, we, I feel like we have to pay a visit to the area just to see how it is looking exactly, but uh, I imagine it's going to be pretty impressive, and we do have a strange old cave along the way, so without further ado, let's get this thing started. And while writing, we can see that a religious fanatic from Old Town is following our army. While he gains some converts, he also creates some unrest. We decide to... Hmm... We could let him be, offer him a place in our warband, or get rid of him. A little bit of unrest is okay. We're going to let him be for now. We're not going to um, force him away. He can follow. And you know what? It's improved our relation with Old Town, which is good considering we have business there. But um, again, all different factions that are kind of at odds with each other. At this stage, Old Town and the Stormlands are allied, so <laughs> that's still kind of working out for us. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we can see that Garrett has been foraging food for us which is very nice but we feel a little peckish and decide to go hunting for food in the nearby woods in the undergrowth while whistling a merry tune we managed to spot a bush of some kind of wild berry 
Do we eat the berries or ignore them? I'm gonna ignore them. I'm gonna let my stomach rumble just because I feel like eating from the wild maybe not our best choice we can make. Now we are approaching a town called the Crab's Nest, which I've gotta say, I like the name. I like the name. Uh, we are going to have a quick ride around here though, just to see. I mean, it's just a, it's your regular kind of village, really. Nothing too special. Yeah. Well, this is the crab's nest. We'll have a chat to the village elder, like we always do. Just get ourselves a little bit more known. Actually, that didn't work at all for us, surprisingly. So I, I, I guess we've already met you somehow. I might have, along the way, and just forgotten. Yes. Ah, interesting. We're reviewing the latest reconnaissance report with your men. You whimsically remark that passing through the beautiful countryside makes you wish you could one day cast aside your sword, settle down, own your old land with some local buxom wench, okay, <laughs> and spend the rest of your days making babies and growing wheat. To which one of your men retorts that this was hardly likely, as your body odour is legendary, and everyone knows wheat only grows when attended by peasants. You decide to... Hmm... Wow, I don't think we're going to put someone on a spike. We could glare, we could glare, we could glare, but no, I think we're going to laugh along with it. We lose some renown. That's fine. We can be humbled. We're okay with that. <laughs> I, I, you know what? You know, I. Everyone smells on the road. Okay. No one. No one is uh, exempt from that. We're not having hot baths while riding the open and uh, unattended roads. No. No, we're not. Well, as night has fallen. We are nearing the Airy, and I don't even know if we can ride up to it from here. It looks like we can, a very treacherous ride at that, but something worth visiting at the very least. We are going to approach, and we're going to request entry into the castle. We gotta see what's going on here. We're gonna take a walk around the courtyard. Uh, again, we can, we can enter the Lord's Hall, but we're probably not going to, just because, uh, I can't see Raywind really being granted uh, entry. We have access to our baggage here. Okay, well, let's see what's going on outside of here. See if we can actually get a, a better look at the area. We've definitely chosen the right time of day to do it. And damn, this would be a fun place to defend. It really would. We can see the rest of the Vale out there. We're looking at the top all of it. That frightened the heck out of me for a second then. Turning around this high up. Yeah. Little dangerous, Rewin. Little dangerous. Very impressive. Very, very cool. And again, will be a lot of fun to uh, defend during a siege. If we were ever to take part in one. Hmm. One day, perhaps. One day, but for now, we'll continue on, stopping off at the old cave as we ride around towards Nine Stars. Ah, interesting. We stop off at a town just before the old cave, and we can see that the village of Monton has been infested by looters. Well, let's see if we can help out Lord Benadar Belmore of the Vale by attacking these bandits. Rowan, prepare yourself. Men, get ready. Now we have the rest of the town with us as well, so we're going to go ahead and tell everyone to hold up. Wait a minute. And we'll go start separating our crew out as best we can. They are all over the show right now. We know that they sometimes do have a little bit of an issue setting themselves up close to the edge of the world. So we're going to see if we can get them to work a little bit better here. Yeah. Kind of got them separated. <laughs> now, our archers, I'd still like to have you behind our infantry line here, if you'd be so kind. And cavalry, we're going to get you all the way across here, so that you have a decent chance to run. Looks like we're going to be able to pick up quite a few people in the water here, and I'm going to see if I can lance some. 
We need to get our support well away. <laughs> if possible. Wow, our infantry line is quite long. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Ellen got level up there. That's good. And that's that. Let's go ahead and get our infantry line to charge in. Ouch. Leave my horse. Leave my horse. Thank you. Okay. Moving around on this group here. Another one bites the dust. We've got these armed villagers to help us out, so we really shouldn't have too much trouble here at all. They're looking up this way like there's some over here. Huh? We've got some hiding. Another one behind the tree. Oh, horses are in a bad position. We can't do anything. But I think we're okay. We've gone out team. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, I thought we might have one trapped inside the tree, but we don't. Got him. Raywin finishes it off. And our troop are heralded as saviors of the day. Very nice. Ah, uh, poor Cyril went down somehow. The poor bugger. Look at that, we've already got that renown back. Now, let's see. Are we going to take some supplies? You know what? We're going to say that they need a little bit more. We gain some honor. Nice. And again, honor isn't always easy to get. So, what the hell? We will take it. Some of our soldiers are ready to upgrade. Alan has leveled up during that, which is great. I would hope that our veterans are leveling up. But they're not yet. They're not. We've got some elites. We're on our way. Don't worry. We're going to get there eventually, Tywin. <laughs> We do have some elite longbowmen though, that's nice, and we're going to get some more spearmen down there. Let's have a look at Alan and see what we're going to be able to do for him. We're actually going to do that in that menu. The rest of our troop are looking perfectly fine. Your skills, good sir. Now your strength is already in a pretty good position. Your power strike is getting up there, but we're going to want to just keep on increasing that. Looking at the rest of his skills, he's not really provided any party skills for us, so we're just going to keep on pumping up that strength and make him incredibly good at swinging his sword. Yeah, we really need to get you a better shield than what you have at this stage as well, because he's our main bodyguard. We don't really have anyone else in our bodyguard because they're all cavalry now. Cavalry or archers. And so with that, let us continue to this old cave. It looks like there are some bandits on the other side. Clansmen. We might be able to uh, do something. And we can see that we arrived at an old cave, but we can't do anything with it yet, which means that it's probably going to be included in some kind of quest later. With it being evening, I don't know if this is the best time for us to be attacking them because, uh, well, our archers would have a bit of a harder time. We can see that there's a large weirwood tree here. But I'd still like to try and see if we can chase them down. It looks like we we're going to be able to. What a hard way. Good chieftain, we're going to do it the easy way. The easy way is us running you down. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, cut off your arms. Wow, that was... Yeah, okay. All right. You can try. You can certainly try, good sir. But you might have a bit of a harder time than you think. Now, I would love for us to be able to set up on this little mound that we have here. So let's start getting everyone moving up to this position. I want my archers to be here. I want my infantry to be here. I want my cavalry to be off towards the side. Ready to... We, we are actually going to use them this time. We're going to send them in first. We could actually send them in now. Um, just to start to harass the enemy. But we'll see how that goes. Sometimes the positioning in this doesn't always work out as you want it to. So, let's go ahead to get the cavalry to start to charge in. Disrupt them in the water. Well, is that water actually slowing them down? Hold the charge just for a little bit longer. We want them to charge them just as they're coming out of the water. And there are a few archers there, but they're going to have a harder time actually getting us. There we go. Cavalry, start to do your business. We are also going to do the business. As we ride in across with our lance at the ready. There we go. It's pretty much like a guaranteed kill with that. That is a fearsome looking bear. Man. Man bear. Okay, cavalry, make it back out. 
We don't want them to stick around, we want them to charge in, do some damage, disrupt them, and then get out. There we go. And that's going to give our archers a chance to do some business. This has actually worked out quite well for us. There we go, the big bear is down. Okay, coming for you, Archer. Oh, bastard. So, when they're blocking like that, we need to bait them into an attack or something of the like. And it looks like they are turning tail. So let's make sure this archer doesn't get away. Got him. And we didn't even need to use the rest of our troops. So I'd say that that was a sufficiently acceptable fight. They all seem pretty happy about themselves. Good work. Even Cyril in the back. Okay, damn, we still had one of us killed. A bloody veteran man-at-arms. <laughs> and a longbowman. I'm going to say it's, it's more than likely the uh, archers that did get lucky with those. We can see that we got 12 of those kills. Alan, quite a few as well. Very nice team, very nice. We are going to share the loot with our men. And we have a bent flatbow here. Here, there we go. We got it out in the end. Um, so it could be a semi-decent weapon. We're going to go ahead and collect everything for now. And just have a look and see how we're doing overall. We're still trying to get rid of some of this stuff. It's going to be hard for us to actually get it at uh, at top uh, top notch for that. Sir Clavis. Sir Clavis, let's see. Go ahead and increase your strength. We're going to try and keep on pumping that up for as long as we can. Get that power strike up. And we still need to try and increase our own skill. But that's going to take a little bit longer for us to do. We're wanting to improve our riding ability. We'll get there. We will get there. And now as dawn reaches... Oh, the veil. We're approaching nine stars. But we can also see we've had an encounter of sorts. Going into the woods alone, we suddenly feel a blade across our throat. An outlaw has ambushed us. Listening to him, slobber and stammer, it's clear that the man is unstable and dangerous. We decide to... Hmm, thrust your elbow into his groin, kick the man in the shin, seize the blade. We're going to thrust... Oh, okay, we managed to get away. Good, without getting our throat slit, which would have been good. I imagine we promptly cut the man down moments afterwards. Yeah. Hmm. After breaking camp in the morning. We can see that we are outside Nine Stars. We see the banner of Sir Simon Templeton of the Vale over the castle gates. Now we do have a ring to turn in here. So I would hope that there might be some here. We're going to request entry to the castle and we're going to see if we can uh, find the people that we need to within here. We, we have the tawny grounds. Uh, let's have a walk around the courtyard first of all before we try and make it into the actual castle proper. Although there doesn't seem to be too much to it. I am assuming that, yeah, that's going to take us actually inside. Well, we'll pop inside and... Hmm. Our lord is not here. I see. What do you have there? Some lovely grapes. Well, Raywin, uh, let's have a quick little look at our notes. We can see that we have the tawny at the nine stars. Sir Clifford Gower has asked us to deliver a letter and a gift to the Castellan of the Nine Stars. So, uh, that could have... The Castellan wasn't there. Hmm. We'll approach, we'll crest meeting with someone. There is no one there. Uh, we'll have a quick look in the hall again. You are just a guard, aren't you? Yep, you most certainly are. I see no Castellan. But we might just have to visit the tawny grounds for us to be able to find them. 
And yes, that seems to be the case. The tourney stands have been set up between a shallow hill and the walls of the castle. Already merchants and entertainers have set up shop in anticipation of the influx of knights, squires and ladies-in-waiting coming to attend the tourney. The area surrounding the castle of Nine Stars is very fertile. Great shaggy sheep grazing the fields and farmhands being busy bringing in the harvest. To the north of the castle is a forest that spans many leagues, and to the south is a fertile valley filled with fruit, orchards, and grazing fields for cows. How nice! It sounds like we're in New Zealand, minus the castle, of course. But we are going to enti, enter, 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 we're going to enter the tawny grounds. And here we are. Um, that's an impressive handstand you have going there, sir. And we have some flips, even. Wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's let you uh, feed amongst the flowers and weeds here. We'll go jump off our steed. We are alone here, but we've got our weapons at the ready. We have an acrobat here, Sir Josman Gaunt. Okay, we have quite a few people here. Alan Tollett. Yeah. Wait a few. All right, well, we'll have a chat to some of them and see what's what. We'll start with Sir Josman here. Yes? Um, who are you? Name's Josman. Don't mind Geoffrey. He's too proud to mingle with the likes of us. Ah, brothers. I see. Well, thank you, good sir. Let's just continue along. Sir Alan, or Aylan in this case. Yes, can I help you? My lord, I'm looking for the Castellan. I've brought a gift and a letter from Sir Clifford Gower. Oh, well, I am the Castellan of Nine Stars, so you've found your man. Sir Clifford, you say? Where the seven? We haven't heard from him in years now. That was the old rogue doing. Oh, never mind. How would you know? You did say something about a gift and a letter. I doubt Rowena can even remember Sir Clifford. Not with all those great uncles of hers taking up all her time and attention. Sir Simon's father had seven brothers. Can you believe that? Boisterous and the arrogant lot of them. Well, here's the letter and the gift. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Raymond Celtic, you said, yes? Oh, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, the young lady will surely enjoy this gift. The ring is an old family heirloom. I'll make sure she receives them right away. Say, while you're here, you should take a stroll around the grounds. A great many merchants and mummers have camped outside the walls, and, well, they're sure to provide a great spectacle and much merriment. I'll do that. I think my men would enjoy that greatly. Good, good. Uh, do stay around for the tourney, will you? We haven't had many visitors as we had hoped. The mountain clans have grown wild and... I think that's our horse. <laughs> uh, please behave, horse. Please behave. The mountain clans have grown wild, and many knights and lords have decided to stay in their keeps and hold fast, rather than risking the roads. It was different when John Arryn ruled the Vale, when those vile savages wouldn't have dared show their face, unless they had ten times the number we do. Very well, I'll take a look at the tawny while I'm here as well. Where is that bloody horse of ours? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> uh, let's go have a chat with the rest here. We have Sir Omar. Uh, so, one of the knights that might be taking part in this tournament. Yes. Um, who are you? I am Sir Omar Chishring. Sir Arak knighted me last night. Th this is my first real tourney. It's exciting, isn't it? Well, Sir Omar... Don't alarm the horse that's behind you, please, if you could. Um, yes, never mind. <laughs> please behave. <laughs> um, Manfred. Yes? Who are you? Never you mind. Well, fine, Manfred. 
don't mind our magnificent horse, then. We have a silent brother here, who is, of course, silent. Why do you do this to us? We can't take you anywhere. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, can we talk to any of the folk here? I don't think we can. Um, I don't like that we're running with our blade out as well. <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, we can't really put it away, can we? Not easily. More servants here. Villagers. So, Alan, we have a bard. More villagers and acrobat. And the, the tawny grounds themselves. Well, I guess we could have a little bit of a ride around, but I doubt we're going to get you out of there now. So we're just going to pretend that we don't know you. We'll have one more chat to our friend out the front, but this might be one of these scenarios where we need to leave and come back. Let's see, Sir Drosman. Ah, right. Very well. Uh, oh, let's see. You notice a great spectacle down by one of the pavilions. A man at arms, a young squire, and a knight, with a cert coat showing seven black strips and nine stars. They're beating a young man, while a young woman looks on, a horrified look on her face. Moving nearer, she runs to your side, asking for your help. It seems the knight fondled her, and the young man, her betrothed, protested. That is, when the knight hit him in the face with a steel gauntlet, and the man at arms started kicking him, suddenly the squire turned around and yanked the woman away, taking hold of her hand and breaking her wrist. Uh, we decide to hit the squire and attack the knight and his man at arms or ignore the incident. Well, <clears throat> Raywin can be impulsive, and I think in this instance, she is going to be impulsive. <laughs> As you start brawling with the men, guardsmen from the castle come running over to break up the fight. Before they arrive, you manage to take a swing at the knight and hit him right on the nose. Blood spurfs forth. But in the meantime, the man at arms has managed to get his club ready and hits you in the head, causing you to fall unconscious. Youch. As you wake up, you notice a dim light and a moldy smell. Opening your eyes, you realize you're in some sort of dungeon. It feels like your head is being invaded by an army of orcs, and your body is blue and yellow, covered in bruises. As you get to your feet, you hear voices outside the locked door and are trying to stand upright. You wait for the man outside to enter. So it would appear that we got knocked unconscious and then once we were knocked out, they kicked the crap out of us. How nice. Sir Alan Toilet. And look at this. Toilet? To toilet? Toilet. Yeah. Alan Toilet. Um, we can see that uh, we are in rather basic attire, our armor having been removed. Just our undercoat on. Hmm. Let's see. Let's have a chat. Alan? Uh, Raymond Keltiger. Oh, what were you thinking? The knight you attacked is Sir Raymond Templeton, Sir Simon's youngest uncle. What a mess. The man's infuriated. Uh, let me ask you this, Raymond Keltiger. Uh, how good of a fighter are you? Well, I can hold my own. Let's just say that much. Well, that doesn't say much, does it? A vague answer at the best. You're a guest here, Raven, and an unknown one at that. You struck a relative of a knight of the Nine Stars outside his own castle. Sir Simon would be in his right to cut off the offending hand, but Sir Raymond was never his favorite uncle, nor is he a friend of mine. So, it's been arranged that you will be judged by someone other than Sir Simon. As it happens, I will be one of the three judges at your trial. Then, why are you here? Why, indeed. Sir Raymond and I have never been fast friends. To tell you the truth, I despise the man. However... The other two judges are his brothers. I'm the Castellan of Nine Stars and a Knight of House Toilet. My word carries weight in these parts, and I will urge the judges to be merciful. However, 
You struck the youngest brother of the two other judges, so there's a risk you'll wake up tomorrow without a hand. There is, however, another option. Well, I'm all ears. You stand accused of assaulting a relative of the Knight of Nine Stars. The judges will be unlikely to look upon your case with favorable eyes, but if you demand a trial by combat, you might be able to prevail. So I ask you again, Raymond Keltiger, how good of a warrior are you? I see. Well, I am good enough that I would want to keep my hand. I am rather bruised and bloodied, but nevertheless, my fighting spirit and my pincers are at the ready. I am prepared for whatever fate may befall me. But if I can fight, if I can defend myself, I will. And perhaps this time I won't get clubbed in the head out of nowhere. A fair fight. Let it be decided by the gods, yes? Sleep on it, Raywan. The trial starts tomorrow. And so we shall. We return to the back of the cells and we plop ourselves down on a bed here. Not exactly the nicest conditions we've stayed in. Raven was getting used to much more than this. Impulsiveness can have its uh, drawbacks. As soon as Sir Alan leaves the cell, you fall into a dreamless sleep. You're woken by the call of a rooster, and soon enough, the guards come to fetch you for the trial. As the guards escort you to the great hall of nine stars, you notice a mass of noble lords and ladies, the knights attending the tourney, their wives and companions, their squires and attendants have all turned out to watch the trial. You can hear whispers, snickers, and a quiet conversation, but have no way of knowing whether they're directed at you or Sir Raymond, who has already arrived wearing a doublet of yellow and black and sporting a red, swollen nose. As you make your way towards the dais, where the three judges are seated, you see Sir Alan smiling at you. But the other two judges scowl as if a nasty smell has followed you into the room. Sir Emmerich and Sir Arak Templeton, twins by the look of them, both have the look of warriors, broad shoulders, thick necks, and flat bellies. As the trial begins, the judges ask if you have anything to say. You decide to demand a trial by combat. The hall immediately erupts into chaos, with knights and squires shouting, ladies gasping, servants clapping. Sir Raymond and his two brothers seething, and Sir Aelin favoring you with a big grin. The guards look confused, unsure of what to do, until Sir Aelin calls for quiet. He declares a request for trial by combat within your rights, and that the gods will surely look upon the righteous with favor. When Sir Raymond asks if you will still lose a hand when he defeats you, and asks if you accept your yield, Sir Aelin decrees that the loser will receive 50 lashes. When the guards gather around you to escort you back to your cell, Sir Aelin tells you to stop, and instead brings you to his chambers. As the guards escort you to the Castellan's chambers, you notice some knights nodding their approval of your actions. It would seem Sir Raymond is not so well liked. Well, perhaps that will somewhat work in our favor. That is a very large bear. Very, very large. Well, are we prepared for this? As much as I think we can be. Sir Aelin? Let's see. Raymond Keltiger. <laughs> Did you see the look on Raymond's face? That bastard got surprised there. No denying it. But can you defeat him? I admit, I know nothing about you, except for your ability to hit knights right on the nose. Are you a knight yourself? Um, not officially, no. Oh, well, 
I guess it doesn't matter. Do you have your own armor? Sword? Helmet? Horse? Ah, either way, I would be honored if you let me provide all you need. Rewin, during your trial, did you notice how some of the knights and ladies seem to approve of your request? Sir Raymond is not well loved, and there have been stories. Peasant girls have always complained before. Either way, I think that it is not only the small folk, but a great part of the nobles that will be on your side during this fight. I suppose so. Do you know the rules of trial by combat, Raymond Keltinger? The fight ends when either party yields or is killed, or when the accuser takes back his accusation, or when the accused declares himself guilty. You'll need to either kill Sir Raymond, or force him to yield and withdraw his accusations. Very well. I think a good beating to the head might do that, one way or the other. I don't imagine there's much more to say. The, the trial is tomorrow. I suggest you get some sleep. Sir Raymond was never a great warrior, but he's not unskilled either. I see. I will try to prepare myself as best I can. And that we will. We will spend some time by the fire contemplating our future. And maybe looking deeper into that fire and saying a prayer or two. Not only to the seven but to whatever gods that might be out there that would aid us. The god that resides within that fire, perhaps. As you lie down to sleep, you ponder how to defeat Sir Raymond. Soon, however, sleep overwhelms you, and suddenly dawn has arrived. Once again, the rooster wakens you, and Sir Aelin arrives with a servant carrying a plate with two sausages three fried duck eggs, and a piece of new bread fresh from the oven, and a large piece of blood pudding. When you finish, the servant presents you with the armor provided by Sir Aelin, and helps you don it. He explains that Sir Raymond has asked for the trial to be fought on horseback, both of you starting with lances, and fighting on foot should either of you be struck down from the saddle. Too soon, the servant tells you that the time has come, and you both descend the stairs of the keep and begin walking towards the tourney ground. Now, well, starting on horseback is interesting. It could be over incredibly quickly. Also, I have no idea what kind of armor he has provided. So, it'll be interesting, to say the least. As you reach the tourney ground, small folk surround you. Grizzled old farmers shake your hand, and young peasant girls kiss your cheek. I mean, Raywin's, Raywin's popular with everyone. <laughs> young men pat you on the back, and a septum pushes through the crowd to bless you. You climb over the fence, separating the tourney grounds and the surrounding fields. On the opposite end of the field, Sir Raymond is standing ready, holding his weapon. In the stands surrounding the tourney grounds, knights, nobles, ladies, farmers, Merchants are gathered. A septum is summoned to deplore the father above to give strength to the righteous and judge the men about to fight justly. A herald blows a trumpet, the signal to fight. You tighten the grip on your sword. Charge. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. We're not on horseback. What happened to horseback? And... Our weapons and armor, it looks like we're actually wearing what Mr. Cargo was wearing. Uh, we don't have a mace as well. This is going to be very interesting, I can tell you that. Please, miss. Okay, that's a good start. Oh, great start, okay. Oh, you, you fool. You absolute fool. Well, Raymond, with bloodied hands, <laughs> Sir Raymond falls to the ground. The stands erupt in cheers. Then the small folks surrounding the tourney shout your name. Blood leaking through his armor, Sir Raymond gives a final sigh and then breathes his final breath. We killed him. 
exhausted yourself, you motion for a servant to help you get out of your armour and back into some more comfortable clothing. Suddenly, Sir Aelin appears at your side, taking hold of your arm and dragging you off towards the woods. Interesting, we've gained two agility and 34 renown. Damn. Still groggy from the fight, you can't make sense of what he's shouting, but then points towards the castle gates. There, Sir Ebrick and Sir Arik are mounting their horses and grabbing swords, obviously intending to revenge, or rather avenge, their little brother. Sir Aelin leads you towards the road, leading towards Snakewood, and tells you to make haste. Before the brothers can catch up to you, as a final gesture, with a broad smile on his face, he hands you a small bag filled with clinking coins. I bet a good amount on you, defeating Sir Raymond, and I figured it was only just that you should have your share. Let us continue. Setting out, you make with good speed towards the safety of Snakewood, but the brothers are mounted on fine horses, and they know the woods much better than you do. Soon, you can hear them coming up behind you as you turn your horse around, ready to face them. Okay, so are we on horseback? We are not, but we do have some friends. Okay, friends, hold back for now. And we actually do have our weapons, so let's go see if we can get off a proper... Okay, we broke our lance. We did damage the horse. And he doesn't have a weapon up. Let's kill that horse if we can. Okay, we've got Drollo assisting us here. Well, Drollo, help us out, buddy. Okay. That's Drollo down. Not good. Okay. Alright, his horse is down. Okay, okay, okay. Yes! Get down, boy, get down. Okay, alright. This horse is dead. Let's move back towards the trees. Make the most of it. Oh, yes! Here we go. You're afraid now, huh? You got the fear in you. You're gonna miss. Yep, told you. That is what you get when you mess with the crab. You mess with the crab, you get the pincers. Oh, wow. My heart is going there. We gain more renown. You hide the bodies of Sir Imric and Sir Arik in the woods, hoping that they weren't followed by anyone from the castle, but not before looting their bodies. Oh yeah! Then you turn back towards Nine Stars to mask your tracks in case men are sent after you. Okay, so... Oh, both two-handed swords. That's, that's okay, that's alright. Uh, so still pretty damn decent weapons with a fair amount we've got a great sword here we have a bastard sword uh we are actually yet yeah, we are actually <laughs> picking those up we have some well-made mirrorish carpets some fine hides and a fine fur bundle i was hoping we might be able to get some of that armor but well we can't be picky okay yep we turn back okay wow we we did it we did it. We survived. We survived all of that. Uh, yeah. We still need to return to Sunspear. <laughs> uh, but we, we completed the... We completed it. Let's uh, approach the gates. Um, let's see if we can request a meeting with someone. Nope, there's no one There's no one else there for us. We successfully pulled that one off. Um, Raymond, I have to say, that was rather impressive. And uh, we were more than capable of achieving that. Damn, she really is making a name for herself. Uh, maybe that isn't entirely for the better. But for now, we are successful. And with that, we'll be bringing the episode to a close. Lady Raywin Keltica came to the Nine Stars, expecting a tourney. And, in a sense, her wish was granted, facing off against three knights, ending the lives of all of them. A trial by combat, deemed worthy in the eyes of the gods and the people. 
the legend of the Iron Crab was growing across Westeros. Fame and infamy interwoven, Raywin was upsetting a balance, a balance precariously perched, and once it toppled one way or the other, this Iron Crab would have to scuttle to remain on its feet. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Raven's Tale. If you don't know it already, you can pick up the very first piece of Rikon Roleplay's merchandise featuring Leonidas Aventus, the Dragonborn himself. There will be more items added to the store in the coming months, all available at rikonroleplays.com slash store. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the patrons who continue to make this content possible. 